<laughs> Abide in me. Abide in me. He goes, I'm the vine. You're the branches. I'm in you. You're in me. But I got to teach you something. It's called learning how to draw on the sap and learning how to make withdrawals of the life of God on the inside of you. Cling to me. Live on me. Pull on me. Receive from me and stick close to me. Abiding in the vine. Living in his word, obeying his commands, and talking to the Holy Spirit. Living in the Bible, obeying his commands, and talking to the Holy Spirit. Go ahead, go with me to John 16. Now we're about to have fun. Verse 6, he says, but because of these things I've said to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Verse 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away from you. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Well, what's he going to do when he comes? When he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, and of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Verse 12, get your seatbelt on. I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Jesus wanted to just go buck on them, but they were not prepared for the things Jesus wanted to tell them about the Holy Spirit. He says, I can't talk to you on an old operating system. I'm getting it all the time on my phone. You got to download so you can get all the new stuff. I'm the kind of guy that resists it forever. <laughs> he says, you need a new hard drive, a new operating system to be able to flow in this next season I'm bringing in. You can't bear it now. Look at, look at this, verse 12. Get your seatbelt on. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he's going to do six things. You need to write this down. Number one, he will guide you into all truth. Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. Number two, he will not speak on his own authority. Number three, whatever he hears, he will speak. Here's a question for you. Who's he talking to? Who's Holy Spirit talking to? The Father and the Son. And whatever he hears, he will speak. He will speak to who? People that care to hear. I fly all the time. It fascinates me that I can be in a complete dark and then all of a sudden you show up and there's a landing strip out of nowhere. I've said to God, I want my life to be a landing strip for the secrets of heaven, for the spirit of revelation. In the midst of a dark and perverse generation, I want the cargo planes to be landing in on my life. I want dreams in the night. I want rhema words. I want the still small voice. I want insight. I want the stuff that he can't share with everybody because they haven't built a landing strip. I want to build a landing strip, which means speak, Lord, your servant's listening. I don't want my prayer life to be me talking all the time. That's another issue of prayer. Does anybody like hanging out with somebody who talks all the time? Well, I'm no, we're going to go into marriage counseling here in a little bit. Yeah, this is what I've been telling you for 15 years. It's always about what you're going through. When can I share what I'm going through? God's so kind, he lets it, but he goes, I would really like prayer to be dialogue and not just monologue. I'd like you to hear the things that are on my heart. I want to whisper things to you. Prayer begins with listening. Prayer begins with receiving. Prayer begins with you shutting up and ripping your list up. Prayer begins with you opening your Bible, 
talking to the Holy Spirit and building a landing strip for secrets to begin to fill your life. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I feel like I'm talking. Do you know what I'm talking about? Go on the awkward journey of sitting with him. It's awkward. You're not going to know what to do. It's okay. It's okay. We're all like two-year-old distracted kids that cannot look focused for more than three seconds. There's nobody else he has to deal with but people like us. He will not speak on his own authority. Whatever he hears, he will speak. He will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. He will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. This is one of my favorite verses. Look at 16, 16. A little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me because I go to the Father. He goes, you're not going to see me and you're going to see me because I'm gone. How do you see someone who's gone? How do you see Jesus when he's gone? Learning how to behold the Holy Spirit. Last night I gave you Ephesians 1, 16 through 19, that the eyes of your understanding would be opened. Do you know that your spirit has eyes? Do you know that your eyes, you have spiritual eyes, spiritual ears, spiritual faculties, and most of us have not cultivated sight, sound, encounter with our spirits. He wants to teach you how to behold. He wants to teach you how to see.